it is. I'm gonna shave. It is Monday. I think it's Monday. It's Monday, May 2nd. So, uh, much advertised. <coughs> um, much advertised uh, severe weather for today. We were talking about last week. And, uh, and then again on Wednesday, and then we get a break, and then possibly uh, on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday of next week. Um, another wave comes in, so we'll be watching it. We'll get uh, this number to, we've already got a thousand people here watching, so we'll get started here. Um, so here's the deal. Um, several things going on today. It's, it's, a, it's a powerful storm system. Right? It's a powerful storm system. Um, uh, lots of instability. We had rain overnight. That's now beginning to move out. We're now becoming unstable. So we're going to have two areas that we're going to we're going to fire storms off today, and that's going to be in northwestern Oklahoma first, and then we will fire those on what we call the triple point. That's where the cold front, low pressure, and a dry line are together, and then the cold front's going to start to push, and then the cold front's going to unzip, and we're going to get thunderstorms along the cold front. <clears throat> so, and there'll be enough instability, there'll be enough shear, enough spinning that we're talking about large hail, damaging winds, and certainly a, a tornado threat. Um, the tornado threat, um, it's there all day, but it's highest in northern and northwestern Oklahoma the first several hours after storms develop. And there's reasons for that. Cold front catches up. Um, so, you know, it's it's not... You know, if I live in northern, northwestern Oklahoma, you are definitely under the under the uh, under the bullseye of of where these you know two or three storms up there take off that are certainly capable of producing you know tornadoes. But as they get east, they kind of run out of instability. It's not quite as high as you get farther east. Um, so here's the deal: um, we'll watch that area first, and then the cold front's going to light up, and then we'll bring storms back down in Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City sees storms. Early this evening, 100% chance. All of the metro. Okay, and I'll show you these coming up. So um, here's the deal. We've done this so many times. Just have your plan in place. Um, certainly not everybody is going to get a tornado warning today. Certainly not everybody is going to get a tornado today. Um, you definitely have a little bit better chance at your house or your location of getting large hail and damaging winds. So, <clears throat> yeah, anyway, um, it's all good. But uh, weather team is ready, trackers are ready, choppers are ready. I've already coordinated with uh, resources out of our sister station in Tulsa, Channel 6. And uh, their chief is Travis Meyer up there. He's my counterpart. And anyway, we're ready to go. All right, so let's, let's talk about what's going on right now. The rain here quickly, and I will not keep you long. Um, a little bit of light rain still hanging around, right? Um, there is a main wave of rain that came through this morning, came through central and western Oklahoma overnight. Still some showers back in here. Now, what this is going to do is, is this is keeping our instability down some <coughs> with showers still bubbling up. So we got we got to watch to see how long those hang around for the afternoon. But the plan is this all goes away and then we become um, unstable. All right, so here's what one of the models uh, is doing. And I'll just kind of show you here. <coughs> and some of the models are different. They're, remember, these are forecasting tools. These are not exactly of what's going to happen, all right? So here are the showers now. They come to an end, and then watch northwest Oklahoma. This is up near the surface low, the dry line, and the lifting warm front. Boom. Supercell, rotating storm, moves across Major County into Garfield County. Couple of big storms up here, capable of large hail, damaging winds, and certainly tornadoes. Okay, <clears throat> and then notice how this starts to quickly sag to the south and come into Oklahoma City, and and so this is coming in Oklahoma City. <clears throat> um, that is in between six and seven o'clock. Okay, big hail, damaging winds, large hail. Could see golf ball, could see maybe some tennis ball size hill here. Okay. All right. So, uh, again, 
Now, here's the dry line out here. Notice how the dry line is quiet except for up here. But some of the data, I wanna point this out, some of the data develop storms back in here. If this happens, this will put parts of central into western Oklahoma under the gun for higher end severe weather. If this scenario works out, the tornado threat is here, up across northern Oklahoma, and then it becomes a wind and hail threat that continues, but also a lower tornado threat as these storms are on the, dry, are on the uh, coal front. Okay, but the, the tornado threat with any of this today is certainly not zero. It's higher up in northern Oklahoma initially. Okay, so uh, and let me just show you some of the, what we call helicity streaks with this. And again, these will change a million times, but this is telling me the biggest tornado of the day it comes out of Southern Woods County, the major alfalfa county line, uh, Enid, uh, over near the 412 and I-35 exit or junction. Okay, and again, this will change some. This might be a little farther north. This might be a little farther south, or it might be right there, but... As far as getting a long track, rotating thunderstorm that's producing a tornado, northern Oklahoma. Northern Oklahoma is that spot. Okay, so if you get under a big storm up here, but heads your way, it's gonna have a real likelihood of, of producing a tornado. And you look at the instability up here, and notice how once you get farther east, how the instability is, is much less. That's because we've had rain overnight this morning and the showers continue, but we still have more than enough instability to bring those storms in Oklahoma City. Okay, so um, one more time. Okay, so here's that initial storm, takes off, boom. There's Woodward, moves almost due east and then starts to move east and build east-southeast. Okay, so there's, you're thinking, what, okay, there's, there's seven o'clock at night. Big storms coming in Oklahoma City, large hill, damaging winds. Um, there's eight o'clock, south metro, down to south of Chickasha, Ninaka, on and blasting through Tulsa. So this model now is just, uh, it's updating right now. It only goes out through eight o'clock and normally it'll, it'll go out farther than that as it updates. But so we see storms in Oklahoma City. The question is, do we see storms out here? Okay, if not, if storms can't develop on the dry line here, then we're just gonna be dealing with this that comes in Oklahoma City, okay? But the tornado threat, it is highest in northern Oklahoma. And, I, and I, I want to point out, again, this is a day where the atmosphere is set up to get a strong uh, tornado or two, or what we call a long track tornado that would be on the ground for a number of miles, possibly. And, uh, you know, it would be weak at times, but also it could be a strong tornado. And that would be developing in northwestern, moving into northern Oklahoma. And again, that's fairly early, two to three to four o'clock is when this is, is rocking and rolling up there, okay? So if you live uh, in Major County, Alpha Alpha County, Grant County, Garfield County, Kay or, or Noble, um, you know, Eastern Woodward County, Woods County, you need to be, you need to be thinking about, you know, hey, I'm, I need, just don't unplug today. You're not gonna have 10 storms producing, you know, 20 tornadoes, but you certainly could have at least one storm, if not two big storms, that are, uh, uh, you know, doing some things that we don't like. And I'm talking about producing tornadoes, okay? Remember last week, we were all talking about the cap and the cap. The cap in northern Oklahoma and even central Oklahoma, there, this, this, it's not a problem today. We're going to be uncapped, okay? So we are going to have storms today. That last week was very, very conditional. Very, very conditional. We had all the ingredients, but the cap or the lid held. And that clouds could not, storms could not punch up through that warm layer of air. Could not do it. And that's what we were talking about all the next week. So this week, today, and then again Wednesday, there's not going to be a problem with the cat. We will get severe storms. Okay, let me show you one other little problem here that I foresee that we need to be thinking about. Um, and again, this is just one of the models, but let me show you what it's doing. Um... Now, th this is another model, but notice what it does. Those same helicity streaks are still across northern Oklahoma, but see how it has um, helicity streaks down here? Sorry, down into Caddo County and Grady County. That's because it has storms developing along the dry line, okay? 
So that's a problem. Um, that is certainly a problem. Let me, let me show you this real quick. <clears throat> so um, this has a little different scenario, right? This has storms farther south. Um, hang on here. Okay, so the, hang on, sorry. This has storms coming out of Caddo into Canadian and Grady County. This would be a this would be a bad scenario um, for 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 the metro, for at least you know the west and south metro. Okay. All right, so we'll see, and but there's a chance that happens. Just I can't stand these advertisements. All right, so the. This is another scenario where we not only have the big storms up north, but we get other supercells developing um, out ahead of the dry line. And here's what this looks like. <clears throat> See how these storms are down here west of Oklahoma City? Those are supercells. Okay, so we, we have to watch that. God, these ads are just crazy. Oh, gosh. Orvis, really? Coles, thanks a lot. Okay, so we, we've got to watch this line here. Um, we have to watch this line that is approaching the metro. If these storms develop, some of the data says they don't. But these could certainly go up. And if those develop, they come down I-40 into central Oklahoma. Okay? So this is not locked in. But we cannot ignore it. So even here in Oklahoma City, under the gun, if storms develop west of the metro on the dry line. And then we do get this. Remember, if this doesn't happen, okay, bear with me once again. If the storms don't fire out west, if, they don't ha if that doesn't happen, if they don't develop here, well, this does happen, though. And then here's Oklahoma City. And then these storms do come in. Okay? So we're going to watch this area initially. We're going to watch down the dry line for additional storms. If these storms develop, they're not there on this, on this model, but if they develop, they're going to come into central Oklahoma, and they, they could be producing, obviously, large hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes. If they don't happen, the tornado threat will be highest in the north, and then we'll get the cold front pushing a severe line of storms, wind and hail with a lower tornado threat coming in Oklahoma City. Is this capable of producing tornadoes? yes. It is. Um, it's just not as high as the threat up across uh, northern Oklahoma would be. Okay? Um, it's just not as high. Let me show you one thing here. These helicity swaths here. Show you this again. Okay, so, um, yeah, and today it will be a tornado watch. It'll come out, you know, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock maybe. And uh, I expect it to cover all of northern Oklahoma. And it depends on if storms look like they're going to fire to the west of Oklahoma City. Tornado watch comes down to like I-40. If storms look like they're going to fire farther southwest, like I was talking about on the dry line, they'll bring the tornado watch down to like Caddo and Grady, you know, counties and uh, Cleveland, McLean, Oklahoma. So it's uh, the, the southern extent of the watch. And then we're, um, if the, um, I still think the watch comes down to Oklahoma City to begin with. The question is, does it go a little farther south? At some point, the tornado watch will be replaced by a, a severe thunderstorm watch, okay? Uh, let me show you one other thing I'm looking at. And I'll show you here in just a second. So, <clears throat> again, um, severe weather, yes. We're going to have severe weather today. Um, not everyone's gonna have severe weather. Not everyone's gonna get a tornado. Let me show you one other thing here I'm, I'm looking at. Um, oh, hang on. Sorry. Um, so, again, once again, we're going to focus northwestern Oklahoma for the initial storms developing there. I had this brought up. My, my apologies. There's another model that I do like. Let me see if it's out. Okay, it's not out yet. It's another model that I use. It's a... Anyway, it's another, it's a good model, but it's just, it's just not coming in. It's a little bit slower. 
Okay, so um, again, I know you know everyone has plans, everyone's out and about, and I get it, and running around and all that. So um, northern Oklahoma, northwestern Oklahoma starts there, moves to the east. Northern Oklahoma, you're under the gun. Oklahoma City, if we see storms coming in from the west, it would be late this afternoon if they develop to the west of us on the dry line. But for central Oklahoma, for El Reno, Piedmont, Edmond, downtown Oklahoma City, Choctaw, uh, Moore, Norman, our storms come into Oklahoma City between 6 and 8 o'clock on the cold front. And those are going to be large storms producing damaging wind and damaging hail. And the hail in Oklahoma City could be pretty big. So the way it's going, we end up with hail in Oklahoma City, and if the instability, if we can recover in the atmosphere, like the data is showing, um, we're talking about, you know, up to tennis ball size hail, for sure in northern Oklahoma, maybe some baseballs, and then for central Oklahoma, quarters, golf balls, maybe some tennis ball size hailstone across the metro. Not everywhere, okay? We're not going to get a three-county swath wide of, of hail. That's tennis balls or anything. But we're definitely going to have to watch uh, the storm. So still in question, are, do the storms fire on the dry line? Not convinced that's going to happen yet. Storms for sure develop in northern Oklahoma and build down into the metro. And uh, just so you, I'm going to talk about this real quick, just so we're not forgetting getting everybody here. Um, so hang on, it's two seconds. And the internet is running slow. It's not the internet. It's actually these web pages that I'm going to. And some of these are paid. I pay for this. And it's slow. It's kind of ridiculous. Because people are just like me. You know what I mean? Looking at weather data. I get it. But I need it more than they do, right? People from all over the country are looking at what's going to happen in Oklahoma today. That's how it works. All right. Okay, so... Uh, Okay, so this model does not fire storms out west of us, but it brings the main line in here. That is um, okay. So there's uh, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. I have no idea what just happened. Oh my gosh, my computer just restarted. I have no idea what just happened. Okay, so um, two to four o'clock, northern, northwestern Oklahoma, coming into central Oklahoma between six and eight, moving south of Oklahoma City, um, down across southern, southwestern, and and uh, talking about Paul's Valley, that'll be between eight and 10 o'clock. Paul's Valley, uh, um, gosh, let's go back to the west. Uh, Nittacaw, Lawton, Ada, uh, storms moving there, it'll be a little bit later. It'll be a little bit later. So hang on just a second here. So when your computer does that to you, what do you do? What do you do? You bring up another computer. All right, so hang on here. Give me two seconds. Yeah. Okay. Okay. A little smaller version, but it'll work, right? Always got to have a backup. Always got to have a backup. Okay. So um, that is at six o'clock. All right, coming into Guthrie, Kingfisher County, 7 o'clock, coming into Oklahoma City. And then from Oklahoma City to Tulsa between 6 and 7. Okay. Um, there's 8 o'clock. Moving through Oklahoma City, now running from uh, north of Lawton to Purcell up to Tulsa, southern sides of Tulsa. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, uh, Marlo Duncan. Paul's Valley, south of Tulsa. And there goes your cold front, and that's it. All right, so we have to watch the first couple hours, first several hours. Supercell's up here, large hail, damaging winds, was certainly a tornado threat. Cold front begins to light up, and that comes ripping through the metro between 6 and 7 o'clock. Wind, hail, 
There still is a tornado threat on this line. It's not as high, but it's still there, okay? And then there you go. Okay, so that's, that's the way that looks right now, okay? So six to seven here in Oklahoma City. But once again, we have to watch the area back out here because the dry line, like I said, let me show you what the dry line is. It'll be easy to pick out for you. Look at the dry line out here. See that? See that little kink right there? There's your surface low. There's your dry line. But the data says the dry line does not fire. It's the, it's the double, triple point where it's the dry line, cold front, and low pressure up here that fire the storms first. And the dry line stays quiet, and then the cold front lights up here later, the, or you know, early, late afternoon, early evening. Okay, I'm not saying that's 100% right, but that's what that's, that's what that's doing. Okay. Uh, far western Oklahoma, you're pretty much out of it. Western, southwestern Oklahoma, you're out of it today. You're out of it. Had some nice rain overnight. Um, rainfall amounts ranged. How are we doing, rain? Not bad. Arnett had an uh, inch and a half of rain. Had a good inch to two inches across central Oklahoma. So rain, rain amounts were good. Can't complain there. But again, it's that time of year. With rain, we get severe weather. This is going into our wettest time period of the year, going into May into June. And it's one of those things where you're going you're gonna to get severe weather. Quickly, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, dry line sets up out west. We get another wave of severe weather Wednesday, Wednesday night. That will include large hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes again. And then we'll, we'll settle things down for a few days after that. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's all quiet. And then maybe some severe weather back in here by Sunday and Monday. Okay. All right. So uh, I got to get going here. I hate to leave y'all, but I will be. Cassie Hyder has the latest today at noon, and I will be back in or be in obviously this afternoon. And, uh, you know, we'll do what we do, folks. And that's just going to be, you know, tracking down severe weather and we'll bring it to you live. Uh, so many ways to watch this now on your phone, your Roku, Fire Stick. Um, you know, obviously YouTube TV is going to be, you know, whatever, or whatever, whatever, whatever app you use to watch us or you get us over the air through antenna, through cable, through AT&T, through Cox. There's a million ways to watch us. So go ahead, tune in this afternoon and we'll see what's going on. Again, it starts in the Northwest and then it makes its way down to the Southeast the way it looks right now. We might have to, we, again, we have to watch the dry line for storms to develop along and ahead of the dry line that could impact Oklahoma City before we get the 100% the guaranteed wave of storms that came into the metro out of northern Oklahoma. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All um, right. Um... Yeah, hoping the cold front hangs on and keeps the risk down this evening. Right, Cherry, that's exactly right. When storms go up on the cold front, that does lower the tornado threat. It does. It's not as high as having storms by themselves out ahead of the cold front, dry line, and area of low pressure. Yeah, that's, that's, those are different storms. But you can still get tornadoes on a cold front, and that's going to be coming in Oklahoma City between 6 and 7 o'clock. So, anyway. Okay. Well, hey, guys. Uh, it's been good. We'll do this again a little bit later this afternoon and uh, we'll be ready to go. So just don't unplug today. Just don't unplug. Stay plugged in. It's all good. It's, it's spring in Oklahoma, right? So just have your plan in place. If, if something's bearing down towards you, you know, tornado warning and talking about a tornado that's coming at you, know where to go, know what to do. Now you're a safe spot, all right? Make sure the kids know where to go in case they're home by themselves. And that's, that's all age, all ages there of kids. Just make sure everybody knows where to go and, you know, it's all good. Okay. All right. Well, guys, I've enjoyed it. i got to get to work. So, guys, uh, I'll see you sooner than later, I'm sure. Peace out.